David was taking a shower in the bathroom. But the next moment there was a sudden earthquake. He didn't have time to think. He got dressed and quickly went downstairs. People on the street were running in the opposite direction with frightened faces. Out of curiosity, David wanted to know what was going on. Looking at the frightened birds in the sky and the sound of sirens around him, he suddenly had a bad feeling. The next moment he was shocked by the scene before him. A cloud of green smoke was pouring out of the ground. The people who inhaled it died instantly. At the same time, there was also a huge amount of poison in the center of the city. They came like a tidal wave from all directions. People were scared and ran away. David saw this and started to run away in a hurry. But the speed of the poison gas is getting faster and faster. It didn't take long for it to overwhelm the crowd. David ran upstairs as fast as he could. He did not have time to explain. He grabbed his wife directly because his daughter was in the vacuum chamber. So there was no danger for the moment. The two of them quickly ran up the stairs. By now the poison was spreading upwards little by little. They arrived at the roof and frantically knocked on the neighbor's door. <laughs> neighbor opened the door. David rushed to the window. It looked like the poison should have stopped spreading, but they were shocked by the scene in front of them. Oh my god. It only took a few minutes for the poison to overwhelm the entire city. Several helicopters suddenly flew overhead. The government had already taken measures. The wife took the walkie-talkie and rushed to ask about her daughter's condition. Luckily, the daughter was safe for the moment. Thanks to the vacuum chamber. It turns out that the girl has a strange disease called oxygen sickness. To put it simply, she is allergic to air because she can't touch oxygen, so she can only stay in a special vacuum chamber every day. And the vacuum chamber battery can only last 7 hours after each full charge, so they have to replace the battery with a new one before it runs out. But the poison downstairs has never dissipated. Looking at the fog in front of them, David was deep in thought. He tried to touch it with his hands. He found that this stuff does not seem to cause damage to the skin, but if only by holding his breath to change the electricity downstairs. Simply impossible to do. At this point David suddenly remembered that the old man downstairs is pulling the oxygen tank is not it. So after confirming the location, he began to hold his breath. Then he followed the pipe to the room where the old man lived, broke the window and jumped in. At this point the old man was not breathing. He did not have time to think. Pulled out a flashlight and started looking. But he never saw the shadow of the oxygen bottle. Can't hold it anymore. David began to panic. Finally at the last minute he found it, put on the respirator, turning the switch. After stabilizing David used the backpack to fill the oxygen bottle, turned around to leave. But then there was a strange scream from the door. He grabbed a hammer and cautiously went to the door. The city was hit by an alarming fog. Those who inhaled the gas died instantly. People had to hide on the roof for a while and wait for the rescue team to arrive. The girl had to stay in a special vacuum chamber because she was suffering from oxygen sickness. But the vacuum chamber battery can only last 7 hours. Time was running out. The girl's father decided to take the risk. He held his breath and followed the pipe downstairs to successfully find the oxygen cylinder. But then there was movement inside the house. He pushed the door and saw that it was a small dog. Why is the dog immune to poison attacks? He found his daughter to replace the battery and then left some food and went out into the street to look for help. By now the city had completely fallen. He took a few steps to find all the bodies lying on the ground. Suddenly there was a whistle in front of him. When he got closer, he realized that a rescue team was leading the evacuation. David went up to ask, but the other side knew nothing. He wanted to take David with him, but David refused, because he had to take care of his family. Before leaving, the other party left him an oxygen tank. David was excited to accept it. When he got home, he started marking the poison. He soon found a fatal problem. Because the poison was not stationary, but was spreading upward at a rate of 1 cm per hour. In the evening, he said to his wife, We can't just sit here and do nothing, although it is safe for now. But it won't be long before the poison completely overwhelms them. In order to ensure the safe evacuation of their daughter, they had to go to the lab downtown to find a special protective suit. The next day, after saying goodbye to their daughter, the two of them went out into the street. The city was like an inferno at the moment. They had to keep moving faster and faster. But at that moment, a vicious dog suddenly appeared in the mist. Through the roadblock, the two men began to run frantically for their lives. Even if it was hard to breathe, they couldn't stop. Because the daughter is still waiting for them. But because the poison was too big, it didn't take long for the couple to lose their way. David accidentally fell into the water. The vicious dog saw this and immediately turned around. It ran in the direction of David's wife. In the panic, 
The woman got on a bus. The vicious dog followed closely behind. And at the last minute, the rope caught him. The woman immediately broke the window and escaped. She went to the river and desperately called out for her husband. She was terrified by the bodies around her. David finally grabbed the riverbank and survived. The two reunited and quickly made their way to the lab and managed to find the suit. But when they were ready to leave, a powerful flame instantly sends them flying. The woman rushed to find a fire extinguisher. But David's oxygen tube was burned off. They had no choice but to take turns replacing the oxygen. David decided to find a place to rest first. So they went to the top floor of the laboratory. The woman rushed to find a medical kit to help David treat the wound. But just as they were about to leave, David found that the oxygen was not enough to support two people. David had no choice but to let his wife go first, although his wife was very reluctant to leave. But she understood that at the moment there was no other way out. She had to drag the box and run towards home as fast as possible. But when she was about to arrive home, the oxygen had completely run out. She could only throw away the oxygen bottle and hold her breath to climb upstairs little by little. At the last minute, she finally caught up. But when he opened the box only to find that the original protective clothing in the explosion had been completely burned. The two people worked hard to get a pile of scrap. The woman felt desperate. At the same time, David suddenly found a puddle of strange blood on the roof of the building. This is a strange blood stain. On the other side of the blood stain lies a man. It seems that a fierce struggle has just taken place here. David cautiously enters the warehouse. There was a set of oxygen equipment and some household goods inside. He didn't have time to think about it and hurriedly put the oxygen on his back and prepared to leave. At that moment a police officer came back with the supplies. David saw that the police were ready to draw their guns. He did not hesitate with the mask rushed up. The two fell into the poison together and hit the car on the side of the road. And the police officer, because no mask so soon died. When the woman saw that the power of her daughter's vacuum pod was seriously low, she made a decision. She took a deep breath, then ran downstairs as fast as she could. At this time, the vacuum chamber has completely cut off the power lights. After the lights went out the poison started to invade along the filter. Mother could not speak because she was holding her breath. She had to replace the batteries as quickly as possible. Her daughter asked her why she didn't wear a mask. The mother could only shake her head helplessly because she understood that this might be the last time she and her daughter would see each other. When David arrived home, his wife had already collapsed halfway down the road and wasn't breathing. David could not accept the loss of his wife. He was devastated when his daughter asked him about it. He could only choke back tears and say, David had just planned his escape route when the earthquake struck again. He went outside the window. He found that the poison was spreading faster and faster. There was no time. He planned to go to the street to look for his daughter's protective clothing and oxygen masks for two elderly people. The old men politely refused. They said they had lived to this age. They don't want anything more. They just wanted to die with dignity. David didn't ask for more. He found his daughter and told her to stay in the vacuum chamber until he returned. But the daughter did not agree, because she had already lost her mother and did not want to lose her last father. But for the sake of his daughter, David had no choice. Not long after David left, the two elderly people also died peacefully in the gas. David finally found his daughter's protective clothing in an ambulance on the street, fighting through the pain. In order to buy time, he found a motorcycle and drove fast. But to his surprise, the gas suddenly sprang out of a little boy. David fell heavily to the ground to avoid him. The daughter kept calling out to David, but there was no response. David woke up, but when he contacted his daughter again, but when he contacted his daughter again, there was no sound on the intercom. He sat down on the ground in despair. At that moment, two figures suddenly came from the distance. David walked up and realized that it was his daughter. She wasn't dead. Lisa rushed to David's side. The two embraced each other tightly. It turns out that this poison does not harm patients suffering from oxygen syndrome. The end of the story. David's position with his daughter shifted. He picked up the walkie-talkie. The voice of his daughter came from inside. Bye -bye,